You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider. Insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by MyAx, one of the fastest options platforms in the world. MyAx is now trading options on the Spikes Volatility Index, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction for confident trading, all for competitive exchange fees. It's time to make a change and give yourself an edge with Spikes. Learn more about Spikes at www.myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for information purposes only and are not intended to provide and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody. That music means it's the end of the week. It's Friday. That means it's time for Volatility Views. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as a little thing we like to call around here, here the old O-I-R-N, a.k.a. the Options Insider Radio Network. We're coming at you live today, 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern. For some reason, I had noon on my brain all day. That's the old time, of course. We're at 1 p.m. Central now. You can get it live on Mixler or, of course, on demand at any time. You can listen at 2 in the morning. We won't hold it against you on your podcast provider of choice. Of course, however you listen, make sure you uh, hit us up those questions, those comments. We do like to hear from you guys, the volatility faithful out there. Enjoy. Speaking of volatility faithful, let's see who we've got joining me on the faithful volatility panel today let's start off he could be down the street in the world hq of option pit he could be in the burbs he could be at a costco near you let's find out he is the greasy meatball mr mark sebastian from optionpit.com mr meatball welcome back to the show isn't it amazing how much great volatility trading is done in the beans aisle of a costco it is amazing how much you can do when buying a 96 ounce can of uh Tomatoes. 96 ounces. That's small for Costco. If yeah, it, I know. If, I it, know. if it's not 10 I, I, pounds. <laughs> no, you know, I like to get those big. The funny thing is Costco, uh, you know, if you're making sauce, the only kind of tomatoes you should use are San Marzano's. You know that. Um, and Costco has these giant cans of San Marzano for three ninety nine, And then you go to the regular grocery store and you see like the little tiny San Marzano can for four bucks. It's like insane how cheap. Costco sells San Marzano tomatoes. It's like tomatoes. they slap you in the face at the regular exactly. grocery Exactly. But I'm actually coming to you from the world headquarters. I'm, I'm up on the 30th floor at uh, the corner of LaSalle and Adams. I thought I could see you there. I'll throw a paper airplane out here and maybe it'll make right. its way down there to you. And also joining us from a little bit farther away. Can't really hit him with a paper airplane. They have to be a mighty one, perhaps with a jet engine, courtesy of our friends at Boeing here across the street. Uh, we are joined by good old Matt Ambertson, the founder and principal over there at Orats, a.k.a. The Options Research and Technology Services, a.k.a. the guy who's bringing you all the sweet earnings data you guys love to crunch during earnings season. Matt, welcome back to the show. You are indeed the inaugural, inaugural easy for me to say, holder of the, uh, the MyAx hot seat on the program today. You're, you're the inaugural guest in that. How does it feel? Is it a little tight? Is it a little squirmy? It uh, feels great. Uh, I'm going to be in Miami next week. Uh, very happy to be on a panel about entrepreneurships. We're all entrepreneurs here. Finally, the industry is recognizing us little guys, Mark. 
you know, that's something I've been pushing the industry to do for quite a while. Obviously, I was functional and active with that Options Alliance for a long time, and I've been telling them for years to say, maybe you should cast uh, uh, some insight and some, some light on other things going on outside of the exchange world. I know it's an exchange conference, but still, there are other things going on in the options world outside of SIBO and ISE and all that other stuff. And uh, it's nice to see that the folks in my are actually doing that. So uh, settle into that hot seat, sir. It's going to get fun. Meanwhile, we're going to keep on rolling right on into the volatility review. <laughs> It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the Volatility Review. All right, everybody, welcome to the Vol Review. And gentlemen, we are in it. We are in the end game. It is the volatility end game. Uh, of course, I really just wanted to throw that in there because the big movies come out. Do you guys have your tickets ready? Are you going to see Endgame this weekend? Matt, do they have movie theaters in the state of New Hampshire? They do. My kids are excited for all that stuff. So. Oh, you're not going? You're not, you're not going to share the love? No. I, I, I went, in Chicago, I went to a, a movie theater that served beer and, and food, and ever since then, I, nothing stands up. <laughs> yeah, they do, I do like that. If you're going to go to a movie... That's the way to do it is to have beer and, and wine and 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 do that during the movie. I, I agree. Beer, wine, and maybe a, a nice four pound can of tomatoes. You never know what you're gonna need over there. But it is indeed the end game, at least for Vol, not a lot going on in terms of where things are going. The market kind of trying to find its way uh, today. We saw some GDP numbers coming out here in the in the open. Uh, GDP was about three point two percent cent that beat the economist you know. Easy for me to say, econ economist estimate. There we go. Say that five times fast. <laughs> you can tell us the end of the week, listeners. I'm having a hard time saying everything today. Uh, the economist estimate of 2.5%. Of course, uh, they, they call it the dismal science for a reason. Uh, stronger than expected exports actually driving that increase. Of course, all that not really causing a little any boost real, really to the markets there because we also saw the stocks really kind of kept in check. We saw... Uh, some bigger names like Exxon, Intel, not exactly lighting up the tape, despite the fact we saw some other names like Amazon and even Ford. Ford getting out there and kind of lighting things up this week. So kind of a mixed bag on the earnings front uh, and some strong economic data, but not enough to really boost the market. It seems like it's in, uh, it's in weekend mode already. Dow up slightly, S&P up a little bit more more than tenth of a percent, NASDAQ off slightly. None of them really rock them, sock them, robots today. Uh, VIX Cash has been an interesting beast to watch uh, coming into showtime. It was at uh, 12 and three quarters or so, then down to like 12 and a half. Now it's back up to about 12 and three quarters or so, up about a half a handle from where it was. Remember, not last week, two weeks ago, we had to have a week off. Don't blame us. The market gods forced us. The, the show was closed. The markets were closed, listeners. And, and Spikes has been hanging. It's been interesting to watch. Spikes has actually been... A little bit more disassociated from VIX Cash than I've seen it uh, in a while. It's actually close to a handle away now. It's about 13 and a quarter. Uh, so it was for a while there, about half, three quarters of a point, a little bit tighter now. It looks like it's about, looks like about half a point away now. But still, interesting stuff. A little bit of a distance there between spikes and good old VIX Cash. Of course, our old friend VVIX. Uh, still hovering in the, I suppose you can, I don't know what you can really call this range, because it's not quite in the 70s, which we know is where things get rocking and rolling. Not quite in the 90s, but it's in the low 80s. It's in about a little bit shy of 84, about 83 and change. So that means it's flirting with that 70-odd uh, handle, even if it hasn't broken through it yet. So maybe it's poised to make a move. Maybe it's got a little bit more retrenchment, retracement to go before it's ready to pop. Either way, maybe something afoot in the coming weeks for VVIX. Uh, Matt, you're our guest, so we'll kick things off. We'll get to all the earnings stuff in a minute, because I know that's really, it's kind of hard to talk volatility right now, especially this week, without talking about earnings. But before we get to that, uh, what's catching your eye in the broad volatility space this week, sir? Yeah, as you know, Mark, we look at uh, some indicators uh, as far as uh, volatility and, and predicting w what the market might be like coming up. Those are all very benign, and they have been for some time. We got a little blip uh, a few weeks ago, and, and we, we uh, sent out some automated warnings to people, but it, uh, you know, it's been really, really uh, benign. Our contango measurement um, is still in contango solidly, and it, and it, it looks like the upcoming 
weeks at least uh, are going to be, you know, somewhat of a snore. So, uh, you know, there's been some interesting earnings stuff that we'll get to. But as far as the overall market, I want to hear what uh, what Mark has to say. Other, uh, that's what I'm watching mostly. Mr. Meatball, it has been a little bit quiet. You know, VIX Cash and Spikes have kind of been languishing in this range in the 12 handle, the 13 handle. For the better part of the last few weeks, have been a few blips, you know, outside of that pretty much, but not a lot, really. Uh, of course, we had the holiday last week, so that truncated things. So I'll allow you, Mr. Meatball, if you are so inclined, to even go back to encompass the, the last two weeks. What's been catching your eye in the volatility space since the last time we chatted, sir? I mean, you can almost hear... The sound of screeching tires as the market stopped moving. Um, even yesterday with 3M getting absolutely pummeled, you know, we had about an hour and a half of real disassociation between the Dow and the S&P, uh, and then that ended fast. Um, you know, realized vol in the spoos is about 6%. Um, I, 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 the, day, the daily ranges, yesterday's daily range was crazy, and I think it was like, what, like 12 uh, today, the daily range is about uh, 9 or 10, uh, yet the VIX has been perky. So, you know, as we've gotten to these all-time highs, I feel, uh, you know, I think people are a little afraid of of shoes dropping. Uh, we also have earnings. Um, the other, we have a trade deal next week, potentially, which could also uh, be a reason that, that falls high. But, uh, you know, I now that we've now gotten through about 80%, of the really big name announcements, we still have Apple and a, and a couple other ones, but Amazon, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Intel, Exxon, Chevron, Procter and Gamble, Disney. They've all uh, is Disney reported? Disney is not. Uh, J.P. Morgan, Goldman. You know, all those names have reported. So we're literally waiting on Google, Apple, and and Disney, and we have a pretty good view of what earnings season is going to look like. And so I, I like, I think that VIX is, believe it or not, it, if people are looking at it in the 12s and saying it's low, I think it's way too high. Uh, I think it should be about 11 and a half. And, and even that is going to be healthy. But, uh, you know, VIX is about 84. The spikes, uh, you know, the spikes looks okay. It's like you said, it's, it's been a little <clears throat> disassociation. And that's probably related to the fact that uh, when um, that spy tends to have, a, for some odd reason, tends to have a little steeper skew. So we could be seeing some some perkiness in uh, out of the money puts that would be driving the spikes index higher. So that that's where that disassociation may be coming from. But on the whole, I, I just think that uh, you know it, it's it's inexpensive to put on hedges, um, and vol but vol is high, so. I don't, I don't know. It's a little weird. I've always said Spikes was a very perky, the perkiest, perhaps, uh, of perky. indices out there. But speaking of disassociation, that's something I've kind of noticed, some of our listeners have noticed lately as well. It, it is kind of, we're in that kind of weird time in the market where the indices kind of seem to be moving a little bit to the beat of their own drummer. You look at small caps and they're doing something, and then you got Dow maybe unched, and you got S&P kind of up, NASDAQ off. You know, it's been, it's kind of one of those weird times in the marketplace. Is that something that's kind of really, you mentioned that as well. Is that something that's resonating for you? It's a weird, a weird I, I wouldn't say correlation is falling apart yet or anything like that, but it seems like we are, are in this weird moment where it kind of depends where you're playing in the space and, you know, whether you're old school economy, new school, small cap, large cap, you're going to have a markedly different experience day to day. Would you agree? Uh, I would. I would indeed. Well, there you go. We agree. <laughs> Crazier things have happened. Dogs and cats. I know it happens. Dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. Let's get to it then because you can't really talk about the volatility that's going on right now without talking about earnings. That's why we got Mr. Matt there in the Myax hot seat. He is the keeper of that data. All those great reports you see, the earnings move, the earnings move results reports, all that stuff you guys get access to uh, over there at theoptionsinsider.com. It's all courtesy of Matt and his team. So thank him. Send him an email saying, hit him up on, on Twitter, at OptionRats, and say, Matt, thank you for all the great data, because you guys have been asking us for so long for earnings data, earnings straddle data, things like that. 
And surprisingly, and I've said this for years, it was, it was a dearth of data on that front, even though it's very important information. And so now Matt is filling that gap, and I am happy uh, to see it and happy to bring it to you guys out there because I know you guys love it. So, Matt, let's get to it. It's been a hot, hot week here from an earnings perspective. Uh, Tuesday, we saw Twitter and Snap. Wednesday, Facebook, Tesla, Softy, Boeing, our neighbors across the street here, Chipotle, a legion of those around this place. They're neighbors all over the place, not the HQ, though. Uh, PayPal, WWE on Wednesday. Spoiler alert, they kind of screwed the pooch there. Uh, yesterday, we had Amazon. We had S-Bucks. We had my old stomping grounds at Intel. Grubhub, Mattel, Barbie blew the doors off. Who knew? So, Matt, there was a lot popping off this week. I'm sure people were hitting you up all week long with uh, questions, comments, what's going on, what's, what's popping off in the world of volatility. So let's start there. Kind of give us like a broad overview. What's really been catching your eye? What's really generating the most interest for you and for your users over there at Orats as we're, we're back in it, sir, back in the throes of earnings season? Yeah, a lot going on. And uh, earnings season is uh, very busy over here. We have uh, you know, I, I like to look just kind of on an overall uh, basis, what's going on now. It, it looks like the the stocks that we cover, they have to be somewhat uh, volatile. Or, you know, they, they have to have some amount of liquidity and volatility needs to be in, in a certain range. There are about 800 total stocks that we that we follow closely. You, you know, like the, the stock prices have been down about 1%. So I, I, you don't really hear that in the news, but, you know, most of these stocks are, are down a little bit. Um, and then as far as the returns uh, that we expect versus what's what's going on um, in the market, let me just take a quick look here on that because the last time I looked, um, yeah, it's pretty flat. So I mean, the, it's coming in right about expectations. There's a you know a little bit of edge to selling as as we normally see, but but not as much as usual. Uh, Amazon came in, but they they were a lot less. Uh, of a move than, than was expected. Um, one of the things that we do, Mark, is we look at, we, we take all of the moves for y the last few years and we, we plot them. And, and I, if, if you imagine a plot with negative percentages and positive percentages, uh, I would, I would ex expect kind of a barbell looking distribution, right? So, you know, maybe down, two or three percent would have a barbell and, and up two or three percent and in the middle might be depressed. Um, however, that's not what we see. We actually see a, uh, a squished normal distribution where it's just a flatter nor normal distribution, which uh, was odd to me. As a trader, you always remember the, the, the big moves and you don't remember the stocks that don't move that much. So what I've been struck by is a lot of these stocks, if you, if you look at our earn move results, and you look at the bottom of those, there's some negative 99%. Like they move one penny. <laughs> and so there's a lot that are moving kind of in that middle of the barbell. And, you know, that's one of the, the, the bigger shockers, um, of especially this earnings, is that they're, uh, that the shape of that normal distribution uh, does look more like a normal distribution and not as much like, like the barbell that you might expect. Uh, you know, Tesla was, was interesting, but, you know, there's so much going on around Tesla that um, what was what was interesting is that it, after earnings, it didn't move as much as, as we thought, even though it was pretty negative. Um, but the implied volatility stayed high. So I thought that was real interesting. So what you had was a, a big expectation of, of movement in, in Tesla, but a lot of that expectation is is carrying over to the not just the announcement but but you know to see what else is going on in the minds of old Elon Musk. So th those are the big things that I've seen uh, around earnings mark. Yeah, you, you know, know, isn't it fascinating speaking of Tesla that now the the market has finally stopped believing that guy's garbage. Oh, we're not going to need more capital. 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 Uh, we need to raise two and a half billion. <laughs> yeah, on top oh, of all, we're gonna funding secured at four, yeah, there we uh, go. for four and twenty bucks. Everyone knew he was uh, making a pot smoking joke, <laughs> and moron still bought the stock. Words, uh, um, words. He probably is, is going to live to regret uh, the the that funding is, secured. That is going to be back below two hundred dollars by the time you can snap. 
You know how expensive, how, without looking, Mark, and I, you probably already did. How much do the 20, 2010, two, 2010, 2010, 2020. That would be an interesting one. Indeed. Would, <laughs> how much do the 2020 $10 puts cost? Well, those, you had to guess. Oh, did, you, did you end up doing your one by two? Did you end I, up you doing know what? I didn't, but I'm going, but I want to. Um, and I may do it today. How much do you, you know, they're 20 cents. I was going to say, they're, they're probably about 20 25 bid. cents because that seems to be the the level that everyone wants to get in on, like that 10 I mean, strike is around 25 insane. cents. And that is, folks, that is how worried creditors to Tesla are about this company. They'll pay 20 cents for a put $220 out of the money. That is how worried they are. This is not a healthy company. <laughs> they will end up being owned by, let's say, Apple. For about a hundred bucks less than it's currently trading. Yeah, we maybe had someone chime maybe, in today saying uh, he thinks Google will buy them out if they drop more, just to uh, take them over and, and do their stuff. Which is, I thought yeah, was Google kind of or Apple would be Apple a, has the cash uh, on I hand. <laughs> absolutely see that, and and yeah, go, a, Apple could buy them with cash on on hand, right? So, I, I could see that. The, the problem is Tim Cook is not the visionary to, you know, Tim Cook is a operator, not a visionary, and thus Apple is in its box now it's it's now uh it, tim cook is to apple what steve ballmer was to microsoft but he cries when he hugs oprah so it's all it's all good there. i cry that's, when i hug oprah <laughs> too. yes that's true we all cry when we see uh Oprah's when we see good oprah here. you know you mentioned you mentioned speaking of tesla matt you kind of mentioned it that if i had to say a surprise uh for the earnings of this week from a ball and overall perspective uh tesla's got to be right up there i mean how many times can, have we seen them uh just dramatically underperform their uh, their earnings and that's pretty much exactly what we saw here this week i'm trying to pull it up here i have all the different reports and for some reason they yanked tesla oh there it is okay uh tesla was on the 24th obviously this is matt these are your reports so feel free to chime in if i if i misstate your data sir uh but they were pricing in that, almost 259 going into their straddle about 258 and a half or so uh they were looking at about a 20 dollar straddle 2005 actually so decently rich that was about uh, nearly a 50% implied vol, close to it. And they actually delivered $6.30, so a dramatic underperformance. Again, that's going into the report. That's not in counting intraday since then. So if you had it the rest of the week, uh, you've had some other moves going on. Let's see where our friend Mr. Tesla is right now. We're at 234 <laughs> listeners. So, yeah, it's had some movement since then. So if you picked up that straddle and you held on to it, as Matt mentioned, the vol didn't come in that much. And on top of it, you had a good move. So you actually worked out. Uh, but it looked maybe a little dicey in the early in the early going there. Also, we saw big names popping off here. Uh, I mentioned uh, WWE not looking good, getting body slammed themselves here this week. They went into their earnings nearly a hundred bucks, ninety eight and a half. They were pricing in four dollars and ten cents. They outdid that by more than two x to the downside, nearly nine bucks in the actual move. So just getting clipped pretty aggressively. Coming into today, let's see if they're getting some of that back. Nope, off another three and a quarter, nearly 4%, down to 82. Uh, so a drubbing. Wow, nearly 20 handles uh, for WWE. Apparently, uh, the market thinking they've, uh, they've topped out. Maybe they've tapped out <laughs> for their recent. Uh, for their recent they, were on, they were one of the best performing names of the year last year. So that's a bit of a fall for Grace, uh, from Grace for those guys. Uh, also, good old Amazon, a name I know a lot of you guys like to watch. They popped off. After the bell on the 25th, so yesterday, they went into earnings $1,902.25. Say that with a straight face. It's kind of a challenge, listeners. Uh, and they ended up, they were pricing in $73.60. They actually delivered, maybe this is the narrative of the week, at least for some of the big names, underperforming their straddles, except for WWE. Uh, $33.76, so nearly half. <laughs> of uh, what they were pricing in there, which is uh, which is impressive, because uh, that's another one, another name we're not used to seeing them under deliver there. And let's see, today they're up nearly 43 handles, so it's kind of a weird one, one of their best quarters ever, yet one also one of, not a great quarter, from depending on how you looked at it, but the market uh, liking what they're seeing up two and a half percent there uh, this week. I know we'll have some questions a little bit later, Matt, about. Uh, we always do direction, how you should trade earnings, things like that. So we'll save that for a little bit. But any other takeaways, 10,000 foot? I know we're only like a week or so in, but we've already seen some big names. And we've seen some surprises so far. Any other takeaways on the earnings vol front, Matt, before we keep rolling into the broad volatility space? Yeah, the biggest mover uh, was a company called 
VC, Victor Charlie, and they make uh, internal dashboards and the, and the car sales. Vistian. Yeah, the car sales have been so bad that, you know, they got crushed. They didn't get near their, their earnings. But then on the other side of the page, Ford. Ford's up a 10% today uh, after earnings. So uh, that, I thought that was pretty strange. Uh, yeah, well, and 3M was, it was an utter dump spill. I mean, yeah. it, 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 I, I can't remember the last time 3M moved from 218 to 190. When was the last time you heard of 3M making a $30 move, a 15% move? Not exactly a name known for such things. A little more, yeah, a little more stayed. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, Matt. But, but was, was 3M's move um, yesterday kind of especially bad, especially pronounced on an earnings? Oh, yeah. 3M, you don't, you don't see that in 3M. Mark, does this make you sort reconsider wishing, wishing you had some single name vol you could sling in that, uh, in that volatility fund of yours, sir? Yes, I do. Well, 3M, if the reason why it, it tanked is because uh, they dropped Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing, and 3M now stands for Mark, Matt, and Mark. <laughs> I was going to say three, nice. three, I was gonna say three Marks, but you went the other way. I, I can see how you're going there. Maybe a mullet, a Matt, a mullet, and a Mark. Well, you we know? Gotta get Matt, if we got Matt, Mike, and Mark, and Mark, then it'd be 4M, and that would be... That'd be infinitely better. Everyone knows 4 yes. is better. 4 is better than 3. We need to get uh, another guy named Mark on one of these shows. Yes, so it can be there's not enough of those. Three marks to tears. Not enough of those here. As we as we continue our search for marks out there who play in the volatility space, let's look back at the broad vol space. You mentioned uh, the VIX, uh, all things. The future is coming in. We're kind of an interesting one to watch as well today. Coming into showtime, we saw a member. It's a bit of a different beast. It's not quite apples to apples when we were comparing it front month and two months out to where it was two shows ago, because obviously that April future has gone off the books. We've seen the futures kind of roll forward a little bit. So when we're talking front month, we're talking a little bit farther out now. So we're talking the front month future is about one, a little over one and a half, a 1.65 point premium to the cash. That's about a full handle higher than where it was two weeks ago. But then again, a different future, so a bit of a different beast. Same thing with uh, two months out where you're talking a little bit longer term. That's always almost a three point premium to the the cash that's almost double what it was last show as well again different beast bit of a different animal out there mark anything catching your eye that's wonky weirdness in the vix futures term structure these days sir oh he's got the mute same muting disease that you do mr it has continued to be extremely flat uh but seems to be kind of starting to steepen out a little bit today um you know i've been just kind of surprised at you know, the, the way cash has been able to, to hold itself up. I mean, we're now, what, expiration is about a month away. We're about a point and a half. That's normal. But where things are really flat is on is in the back end of the curve. You know, July, August, September are all right on top of each other. Um, you know, I, the back end is probably needs to go up a little bit, and the front end probably needs to drop a little bit. So I, I've been... You know, that spread between, like, May and June is real. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I think that uh, the term structure is still a little wonky and set up where a short VXX, long VXZ trade, you know, so long the intermediate, short the, the near dated could, could produce some, some alpha. Yeah, right now, May, June, about one and a quarter handles between uh, the two. So you're at a pretty wide gulf between those two contracts out there. Perhaps some opportunity. Also, some opportunities out there in the options. Let's start in spikes land. A lot of the OI rolled off with expiration, as we talked with the spikes guys before. I think they, they think a lot of people are waiting for the futures. I think that is indeed the case of the big OI. Still, it was the, uh, the vertical call roll of 2025, or I should say vertical, that got rolled uh, a few weeks ago. So keeping that position alive. Mr. Meatball, I heard through the grapevine, a little birdie told me you had your own dalliance with spikes options last week, sir, what, what were you up to out there? Me, I was just playing around. Um, I bought a, a small, small batch of, of spikes puts so that I could um, walk them through. I bought the, you know, a little bit of the 14 puts because I wanted to kind of carry them into expiration. And uh, I paid uh, 90 cents with uh, the spike around 13 at the time. And uh, lo and behold, Spike settled 1167. So go me. My first soiree into Spike options proved profitable. 
There you go. See, you, you make some money. They give you the first one for free, and then you dive back in and get more excited. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's how it always works out, right? The first one's free, and then it works out works out uh, pretty well. But you're right. I've been, I've been meaning to kind of delve in there myself. It's kind of been busy times planning for the, the wave of events that are coming up over the course of the next week and change. There's like three big events coming up. So we're planning for those, listeners. Stay tuned for that, by the way. A lot of great stuff going to be hitting the network soon gonna be chatting with a lot of fun folks here for courtesy of the oic conference and some other events gonna get our old buddy mr Petterfee from ib back on it's always fun to chat with him a lot of fun stuff coming but that's coming down in the next week or so in the meantime let's keep on rolling uh speaking of rolling let's see what's rolling what's hitting lighting things up in the world of vix options a pretty light day today as you mentioned a little bit north of a buck 50 on the tape and turn 50,000, of course, coming into showtime. Uh, the ADV also fairly light. When it gets below half a million, you know things are kind of quiet in the vol space, and that's pretty much where we are now, 459,000. That's very low. Usually you like to see VIX ADV north of 600,000, maybe 650 or so to really be in a healthy kind of robust range. We're almost 200,000 below that. So things not exactly lighting it up. Maybe we're getting a little bit early season. Of course, we're coming up on May. The summer movies are coming out. It is a volatility endgame after all. Uh, so <laughs> perhaps uh, the, I won't say the old adage, but perhaps some of that is kicking in here as well. In terms of what's uh, dominating the tape out there, in VIX options land, let's start from the bottom. I will say this, Mr. Meatball. I wonder, tell me if this attracts your interest, if it piques your curiosity, because it piqued mine. We obviously break down the top 10 uh, VIX options positions every week. Uh, guess how many puts there are in the top 10 this week? Oh, oh. Hmm. I'm going to go four. See, that would be a good guess. That's a safe, healthy bet for a normal week. Uh, zero. Oh. None. All wow. calls. That caught my. If you want an indicator, I mean, perhaps well, there is one. Upside is cheap. Upside is really cheap. But but that's if you want to know what's holding up VIX, that's that's that price that type of action is what's doing it. Yeah, clearly folks are, are not afraid. A little bit of upside. Maybe they're selling a little bit of it too. We'll get to that in a bit. Uh, let's start the number ten here. The May twenty sixes, a buck twenty two on the tape. Number nine. The June twenty threes. Here again, it's going to be all calls all the time, listeners. A buck thirty seven on the tape. Number eight. June 37 halves, buck 40, number seven, the comparatively reasonable May 18s with a buck 53. Number six, May 37 halves, that's always an interesting strike there, 37 half, a buck 86 on the tape. Number five, the May 23s, 194,000. Number four, the May 22s, 197,000. Number three, the May 20s, 233,000. Number dose here, the May 27s, 463,000. And the number one spot with the bullet, the May 25s, yet again, 500, almost 550,000 of those. So that's more than an entire day's ADV uh, just in that one strike and option listener. So a lot there. Even though the total OI kind of light as well, shy of 7.5 million, it's about 6.2 million on the calls and about 1.2 million on the puts. So, yeah, not a lot open. Let's see what's printing. The big print today coming into showtime was, again, surprise, surprise, upside. Uh, May 19, so a little bit, little bit lower on the upside ranks, not exactly 37 halves or anything. Uh, going up 21, almost 22,000 times uh, for 65 cents, so kind of near to the bid. So maybe there is some harvesting going on out there. Some people, some people clo- that was opening, though, so it wasn't like they were closing out some calls uh, that had perhaps not fared as well as they hoped. Uh, but either way, opening nearly 22,000 of the May 19s, kind of maybe dumping today, yesterday. Uh, a couple of big prints going up yesterday. That's kind of the big day of the week was yesterday. We saw the May 20, excuse me, May 23s going up for 35 cents, lifting the offer 30,000 times. So people liking to get themselves some upside yesterday. And then also we saw a roll for about 100,000 contracts. It was, looks like the, uh, excuse me, the May 50, uh, 40 roll going up effectively 50,000 times. So 100,000 total. Uh, we saw the maize going up for seven cents, and the Oc forty is going up for forty-one cents. It looks like someone rolling out and down, which is kind of interesting. Maybe a little bit of a commentary on where we are in the vol space right now. Not keeping that fifty strike alive. Why bother? Go down to forty. Take advantage of the sell-off, but still wanting their upside. Just uh, making it a little bit close to the fire. Can't really blame them. If you had to choose 50 or 40 right now, I'm sure most of you would probably choose uh, the latter there as well. So that's one of the big trades of the week. Wednesday, we saw the big print worry. The May 18s going up 27,000 times for 46 cents right off the bid. So a little bit of upside harvesting. So market seems kind of interesting. There's a lot of upside open out there right now, and it's dominating the tape. But 
not all of it is this frenzy of buying, even though there clearly is a lot of that. There's the role in things, but also a little bit of harvesting. Uh, what are you seeing out there this week in the VIX options, sir? Yeah, we've definitely seen, uh, you know, some pretty heavy um, upside trading. Uh, biggest trade that I saw go up in the tape was uh, July 22, by 2 Rumor was that was against some sort of variance trade. Um, we've seen a lot of, like, risk reversal calling, uh, risk reversal trading. Uh, the June 12, 15 put spread versus the 24 call has gone up a few times. Uh, interestingly, some way out of the money stuff traded. Uh, we saw a June 12 put bought uh, this morning for a dime uh, 10,000 times. I actually, I like that trade a lot. Um, also, the I'm, June, I'm sorry, say that one again. What was that one for a dime? The June 12 puts, they bought oh. 10,000 for a dime this morning. Interesting. I like that. I, I do. I think that's an inexpensive play. June 12 um, if, puts or Tesla 5 puts? What do you want I mean, for a dime? <laughs> puts are a dime. I, I think that those those make some sense. Uh, the other one I kind of like, somebody did the 15-12 uh, the half put spread for a buck. Uh, that is a really nice play if you just think VIX isn't going to get over 14 but for the next couple of months, which I think is, or at least stay over 14, which I think is a relatively safe bet. I, I, I really like uh, that construct. And... Uh, you know, we've definitely seen, uh, you know, upside is still inexpensive today, Mark. I uh, So remember a few weeks back, I was talking about that May 1 by 2 that I put on. Um, I did the May uh, 1721 1 by 2, and I collected uh, two cents. Oh, yeah, our well, listeners wanted weekly updates on that. So yes, let's, let's... well, I took it off, and I paid, guess, guess, I had to buy it back. Guess how much I bought it back for? Seven cents. Two cents. Two cents. So... I made absolutely nothing on that except for that allowed me to be short um, a bunch of vol somewhere else that I made a bunch of money on. So it ended up being a great trade. Uh, and then I constructed a very similar trade. I did the 1621 one by two, and this time I collected a dime. So I will tell you guys what uh, what my – and that is, again, allowing me to, to short – some extra vol somewhere else, uh, but I will keep you guys in the loop on uh, my amazing backspreading. <laughs> amazing, amazing backspreading. News at 11. Uh, but you're right. You know, we talk about that a lot here on the show, but clearly we only look at the options side of it, and there are usually other components uh, that can work pretty well. A lot of these backspreads are going up against aggressive short positions out there. Uh, so if it allows them to shorten and it works out well, then if the option spread isn't ideal, it doesn't move against them, or it moves against them a little bit, not the end of the world, obviously. Uh, so interesting stuff. I forgot which listener it was who, who wanted all those updates on your back spread. But there you go. I know a lot of our listeners like that trade, so uh, they'll be staying tuned for that. Meanwhile, stay tuned for our old friend, formerly known as BXXB. By the way, Matt, did you hear the, uh, the might of, of volatility views has been felt far and wide? Because we were disgruntled here with the ticker symbol BXXB. We thought it was a terrible name. And we said they should go back to BXX. Barclays clearly listened to us. And they bowed to the power of us and our audience and have now rechristened it or about to VXX. So does that make you feel better, Matt, that, you know, just, just the power of the show you're on right now? It does, except for, you know, data people like me, we have to go in and change a bunch of stuff. So oh, it's, you're uh, right. It's I forgot. In the butt. You guys are the hidden victims of all this. Womp, I, have, I, do, I do apologize. <laughs> but, you know, womp, a bad womp. brand is a bad brand. We can't just let it sit, sir. We can't. We can't sit idly by while such horrors are visited. Upon the trading populace. All right. <laughs> Let's look here. What's going on? VXX. It shall no longer be called VXXB. Merely VXX land. Even though, spoiler alert, listeners, if you want, uh, if you want to get a quote for it, you still have to type in VXXB. Unfortunately, you didn't hear that from me, though. Uh, about 25, not even a half, 25.3 has kind of been at that level for most of the afternoon here. Uh, so about one, about 1 1.3 points lower than last show. So pretty uh, a decent little chunk of erosion. I know a lot of you like to play that trade, and uh, it has been eroding of late. Even though, by looking at the open interest, perhaps not as many of you on that tip as there used to be. Not quite as call heavy as VIX is right now, but still... Let's say calls are leading the dance here. Let's go down to number 10. We got the May 28th, 22,000 of those open. Number 9, the June 21 puts, 22, almost 23,000. Followed by number 8, the June 24 puts with about exactly 23,000. Number 7, the June 40 calls, 23, almost 24,000. Number 6, the May 40s, about 27,000 of those open. Then back to the puts, the Jan 14 puts. 
Interesting. I like Jan 14 puts nearly 30,000 of those bad boys. I gotta go get a quote on those, see where those are trading. Now, those kind of intrigue me. The uh, VX, where we got June 80s. Once again, the June 80s. Uh, 30,000 of those bad boys open right now, followed closely by the May 38s, also 30,000, 30,200 to be precise of those taking the number three spot. Number two, the final put on our list, the May 23s, 31,000 of those bad boys. Number one, the, excuse me, May 69 calls, nearly 34,000 of those bad boys. So still calls, so Mr. Meatball, we got all calls in VIX and predominantly calls in VXX. Does that surprise you at all, sir? Uh, it, it does not surprise me. Um, you know, again, you have lots of hedging, lots of, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but we are seeing, I have seen some, some pretty decent trades go up in VXXB in the last uh, few days. There was a big, I'm 15, sorry, what, what ticker was that? I, I don't recognize that ticker. What ticker? Oh, VXX. There well, you it go. doesn't there change until March 2nd. I know, okay? but still. Or May 2nd. We have to embrace our power here or no one will. I like this. A customer did the Jan 2021 1580 risk reversal tied to 2515. Uh, which was kind of an, a, an interesting one that went up uh, a while back. Uh, 1580. Um, so I'm yeah. assuming they bought the put, sold. The, 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 that seems opposite, though, to what we're seeing going up a lot there. People like yeah, that side. I, I, I don't know, but uh, uh, just a ton of volume huh. uh, today. Uh, pretty heavy volume on the May 24 puts uh, and some decent volume on kind of way out of the money stuff. Um, the May 24 puts, they've, they've already done uh, 10,000. A decent one by two put spread. You got the June seventh. They did the twenty four and a half, twenty three, one by two put spread. I'm guessing they bought one and sold two. Uh, just my guess. Looks like the twenty three, twenty one put spread went up some, and uh, just you know that's been the bulk of it. The uh, uh, most of the upside trading has been really near dated. Um, you know, other than we had the June thirty four, forty six call spread. Looks like it went up. And uh, other than that, it's been all May, all May, uh, and then go away. Now, think about that, that risk reversal. I, 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 I get, it kind of depends on the ratio you do the underlying with, I think, of how much I like it or not. Because yeah, uh, 1518, you can lean that a couple of different ways. Uh, if you do it one to one with the underlying, you do it delta neutral. Uh, you know, I think I want to be biased a little more to the underlying on that side, just because I'm not. Yeah, that's a weird one. Fifteen, eighteen. You aggressively hedge that. Yeah, you you would have to very aggressively <laughs> hedge that, because straight up, I wouldn't want to be. I mean, I, I want to lean short, but I wouldn't want to be short the eighteens uh, here and just have that. I don't know. So that's a weird one here. I have to I have to mull that one over. Kind of like it though, uh, just theoretically. But uh, let's know what you think about risk reversals out there in VXX, listeners. A big trade today. Looks like it's a vertical. The June thirty four forty six vertical. Spoiler alert. Paper buying it four thousand. 67 times they did it for 47 cents here you like that one 34 46 listeners you like that 15 18 better again depends on how much vxx they did against it uh and other interesting things you know you guys like to sling your vxx mostly to the dark side but apparently the rest of the market is leaning uh, to the light side vxx these days which is kind of intriguing speaking of intriguing let's hope your voicemail is intriguing as we get to it a little bit of your volatility voicemail it's time to share your thoughts and opinions with your fellow volatility traders. It's time to check the volatility voicemail. Make your voice heard by dialing 779-669-4VOL, posting a comment on the optionsinsider.com, sending an email to questions at the optionsinsider.com, right. or posting your questions to twitter.com slash options or facebook.com slash the options insider all right before we get rolling here we talked a lot about tesla volatility at the start of the show here we are still in the throes of earnings season so we had a question for you we've talked about them before many times on mark just talked about them on this show the what were they 25 cents 20 cents for the uh, tesla jan 10 puts out there let, let your let your let that sink into your brain for a little bit, listeners. Uh, but a lot of the OI, most of the OI in Tesla options is dominated overwhelmingly, at least the top, all the top five and the lion's share of the top 10 are pretty much far out of the money puts, a lot of them in Jan, all of them pretty much at the 100 striker below, which gets us to the very simple question. A lot of money being put on the sidelines just in case or maybe hoping 
that Tesla heads south of 100 by Jan expiration. Do you think that will come to pass? Yes or no? Very simple question. Matt, we shall start with you, sir, as the keeper of all of our data. No cheating. No crunching any numbers, sir. you got to use your gut on this one. What, do you, what is your guess? And more importantly, what do you think our audience is saying, yes or no? I've been bearish in Tesla for a long time, Mark. So uh, I wrote an, I helped write an article in the Wall Street Journal when he did that famous tweet and was he believed or not. So I, you know, I think fewer people are believing him. So I, I say not, Mark. You say no, as in yes, it will be below 100 by January? Yeah, as oh, in yes. Okay, so you're going the yes way. Interesting. Mr. Meatball, what are you thinking? Yes or that a bridge to? You said below 200 before. That isn't as oh, far as it sure. was. That was that's only thirty odd handles now. What about below a yeah. hundred by Jan, sir? I mean, it's lost. Uh, if you look at Tesla, let's see how long. When was it uh, the high on December third, fourteenth? The all time high is uh, August of about uh, three eighty. Yeah, Mr. Musk's the, infamous tweet. Yeah, the near dated high is also about three eighty in December. So in just about four and a half months, it gave away 150 bucks. I don't think it, you know, would I say it's, it's likely? No. Is it possible? I'm going to say, yeah. Uh, I, I, I think it's, here's what I'll say. It is a lot more stinking possible than people think. And um, that's why people think twice about doing those one by twos, because it actually could be below five bucks. So I'm going to, just because I hate Tesla drivers, um, even though some of my close friends have Teslas, I I love them until they get in their Tesla. (laughs) And then I'm like, Tesla owners. I will say, have you ever tried to pass around, go buy a Model S downtown? It is the widest car. It's like one and a half car widths. Super wide. And you, you know what they actually, they don't use gasoline, but they run straight off of smuggery. (laughs) <laughs> they, they, they had the smuggest drivers. Out Wasn't there. that an episode of The Simpsons where back in the day had a it guy was, who, I who believe it was, it was Ed uh, Begley South Jr. Park. He drove a car think, pow- powered by his own self sense of self satisfaction. <laughs> yeah, I think that was uh, I think that was South Park, but it Might, was, one or the other. I don't know. But, Prius uh, drivers, yes, but uh, all the smug in the area in the in the air. But yeah, they they are powered by smug, and uh, and so for that reason alone, I say sure, why not? Let, let's take it down to 80 bucks. You say yes. We got two votes here for yes. Our audience is still leaning no. Two-thirds of it, roughly about 64% saying no. 36% saying yes. Two days left, listeners, Tesla lovers, or I should say Tesla haters, really, because yes is obviously to the downside in our poll. A little bit of inverse psychology for you. If you listen to this show, you can wrap your heads around it. Uh, then, uh, yeah, so get out there if you want. You think it's going to get under. Tesla Defense Force seems to be saving them right now. Living in spite in opposition to what the options open interest is saying, uh, Vivek, Vivek3 wants to know, now that Spikes is live, what is the status of the other Vol newcomers that have appeared on your show, like Valdex and Vol X? I was just talking to the Vol X boys down at FIA Boca a few weeks ago, about a month ago. They're still, they got many iterations. They have real day options. They have a bunch of cool stuff in the offing. They have a couple of things that are holding them back. One is OCC does seem to be a bit hesitant to uh, to create a pricing model, for, a risk model for it that they're comfortable with. So they keep kind of saying they have to push it back down the road a little bit. And they've been saying that for quite a while now, several years, which is uh, unfortunate, I think, to say the least. They should get their act together in that sense so they could actually be able to list these things so we can actually see them in the marketplace. That would be interesting. Uh, so that's the thing that's holding back uh, Volox. Also, they're looking for a future uh, to list with it. So in which case they have to kind of either list with an existing futures exchange or create their own. They're actually leaning the ladder. You might, you'd be surprised. So that's, that's a heavy lift, but they want to go that route. So interesting stuff uh, on the horizon for them. Hopefully we'll see one of those products listed sometime soon and we could actually sink our teeth into it here on the show. Uh, Valdex, that is the Skewdex Valdex stuff. That's in the, that's in the dominion of NASDAQ right now. When I talked to those folks about a year ago, they were champing at the bit. They made it sound like it was going to come out sometime very soon. Uh, we have not seen it, spoiler alert, for a year, so I'm hoping to catch up with those NASDAQ folks next week, actually, and I, maybe I'll pick their brains about that exact topic and see uh, exactly how that's going. So maybe I'll get a little bit of an update for you guys there. All right. Uh, let's see here. 
Benson. Benson H wants to know, is there a clear winner? We always get this question, Matt. So like, whenever you're on, whenever you're talking, whenever we're doing earnings stuff, this question in some variation pops up. This time it's from Benson H. He wants to know, is there any clear winner for earnings season right now for a volatility trader? Is it short vol or long vol that's winning the day right now? Even though we told people many times, don't. <laughs> it's, there's no clear bias. They still want to know, Matt. So I guess right now we're in the early blush of it. Is there is there anything in this early limited sample set that is leading the leading the way, sir? Actually, what I would say in this sample set is, um, on on an overall, uh, stocks are, are are pretty close to what's been implied, but there's been some bigger movers. You know, I would say if you could bet on it on a couple and make a lot, uh, and not take too much risk. You know, moving uh, just in, in that what what I what I was talking about, uh, I've seen more than normal uh, stocks move very very little. So the distribution, if you could figure out the distribution, that's the only thing I, I would say that I've seen that's different this this time than last time. I know it's kind of a difficult answer there, but that that's the only thing different I'm seeing this time. So yeah, no no clear bias, just a little bit of change uh, to the distribution. Here's a, here's a related question, Matt. Another person who wants to say uh, wants to dive into earnings trading uh, we, we talked about different ways net short net long premium we haven't really discussed this approach to an extent this comes from ross ross teal he wants to know what about calendar spreads during earnings where you're long two months out short the month of the announcement does the long leg mitigate some of the risk of being short premium going into earnings or am i deluding myself so here's a listener obviously who's listened to some of our earlier shows said we we've advocated against taking direct positions through the event itself for a variety of reasons. The data doesn't really support it. So a lot of other reasons. It's a risk you can't really control. Many factors, trading before it, trading after it, makes a lot of sense. During it, not so much. But that said, Mr. Matt, I don't know, I'm kind of throwing this at you out of the left field here. So I don't, I'm, yeah, I haven't had a chance to back test this, obviously. Uh, but I'm curious if you have anything to add here for Mr. Ross, who wants to trade some uh, calendar spreads. Again, he's still got that short leg in the front month, though, which could come back to bite you. And any thoughts on this one, sir? Yeah, I kind of like the the thinking, and what I would say is, is, you know, our back tester actually can back test that fairly readily, and what I would add to that is I would look for uh, one other piece just to add to that, something like, you know, the relationship between the front month and and the second month, um, and I think you might be able to find something. So, uh, Ross Steele, give me a buzz at Matt at orats.com and and we could we could talk about how to set up that back test and maybe find some data to support a trade like that there you go matt hit him up uh, or hit him up at option rats on twitter as well and he, maybe you can uh, you can get that set up so you can see for yourself exactly how it performs i don't know mr meatball does that one resonate with you a uh, nice little long calendar spread into earnings where you're long a month out and you're short the announcement itself uh, nothing in earnings resonates with me. <laughs> i had a feeling i, I don't say that. trade them if I can avoid it, um, you know, I'll, I'll, if I can find something really, really cheap that uh, I can make a buck off, I'll do that. So, like, for instance, uh, I had a Facebook. We looked at, like, the 190, 95, 200 uh, bull call fly for about 60 cents. That was a huge winner. Um, you know, the, about the only earnings play I have on right now is a little out-of-the-money butterfly in AMD. Um, but... I don't really, I, I do not really play earnings because it's such a ridiculous crapshoot. Yeah, our audience, they can't get enough of it. They all want to sling themselves some I know, earnings. I it's, know, it's uh, unbelievable. It is interesting stuff. Speaking of interesting, let's see how interesting our prognostications were and how interesting they might be. It is time to get into the crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the Crystal Ball. All right, welcome to the Crystal Ball, the portion of the show where we embarrass ourselves for your amusement and hopefully edification. <laughs> we attempt to wrestle the slippery pig that is Vix Cash and indeed Spikes now as well, which makes it doubly fun. Uh, Mr. Meatball, obviously we didn't have a show two weeks ago. Uh, so there's many different ways we could parse this, uh, whereas, and also the markets were closed 
last Friday. So we prognosticated. I didn't, I didn't remember on the show that we were closed. That would have changed how we predicted. Uh, but we did not. So we prognosticated for a day where the market was not open. <laughs> so we can look at it a couple of ways. Uh, VIX Cash closed on the 18th. Uh, at 12.09. I was at 12.75. You were at 12.37. So in that case, that would make you the winner. Uh, but of course, uh, it opened that day at 12.80, which makes me almost exactly a bullseye. So I'm inclined to go that way. Which way do you like to go, sir? I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. All I know is, is that we just say we both won. How about that? How about, okay, how about this? How Everybody about we wins. Make it a participa- like, it'll be a participation trophy. I like that. We get a nice trophy. Everybody gets a trophy. Everybody gets a medal. Everybody gets a ribbon because everybody did great. And then we let Matt go first. How about that? Because he, he wins, like he wins the dubious it. pride of place. Matt, all of that a long way around to saying you get pride of place, sir. What are you feeling? Not just for VIX cash next week, but for spikes, even though they're, they're usually within a half a handle or so. So you, prediction for one should be pretty close for the other. I'm feeling down a little bit. Uh, that's all. That's the. That's as specific as I could get. He's feeling down. As long as it's just the VIX and not you internally. <laughs> if you feel just... down, Mark and I'll fly to New Hampshire and we'll give you a big old hug. I'll have Andrew drive in from uh, Maine, and then you can feel like you live in an urban place relative to him. I won't have to. We'll see him in Miami in a week, so uh, he, we could cheer him up in person down there. If you're not, if you're sad in Miami, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, that is true. Uh, so I'm going to listen to I'm going to go listen to Super Dave. <laughs> nice. So Matt, you're uh, since you said down, I'm going to put you down for uh, about eight and a quarter. Does that sound good? Sounds good. See, <laughs> there we go. All right, Mr. Meatball, you did technically come closer to the closing, so I will let you go next. What are you feeling? Don't say twelve point three seven. Uh, I won't say twelve point three seven. I'll say 12.36. I'll say 12.36. <laughs> I, I knew exactly where you're going to go. The second I said that, I knew exactly. <laughs> How you're going to go. The blind squirrel findeth a nut once in a while, listeners. Isn't that the, uh, isn't that the old saying? All right, so here we are coming into the end of showtime. We got spikes at about 13.15. We've got a VIX cash. Where did my VIX go? There we go. About 12 and three quarters. So most of them, most of them kind of hanging where they were at the beginning of the show. And you know what? I was at 12.75. Uh, for last week, we're at 12.75 right now, and I gave Mr. Meatball a hard time, but I'm not hating that number right now either. I can see what Matt's thinking about downside, and we, you know, that could certainly come to pass. Uh, Mark's comments earlier about the fact that we're not really meriting even a 13 VIX, let alone a you know a 12 or so. Uh, that certainly has some resonance. So I could see it if we're if we're in a 12 or even an 11 handle, it wouldn't blow my mind. But I'm just, I don't know. I'm not feeling the aggressive downside yet. So I mocked Mr. Meatball, and then I promptly keep my same pick, which is something I, I never do, listeners. So I guess, ballyhoo for me. Oh, well, that music, unfortunately, listeners, means we've come to the end, the end of the end game, if you will. <laughs> but before we go, let's go back around the horn. Let's start with our guest, Matt. Matt, I know you're rushing off after the soon as this show is done to go see uh, Avengers Endgame, so I won't hold you up any longer. But we will be seeing you in a couple of days in Miami, so that will be fun. You and I in the, in the same room is always fun. Uh, but before we get there, sir, people like Ross or others want to check out your back tests or what else you got cooking over there in the land of Orats, where should they go? What should they do, sir? Yeah, it's been a big week. We released a big upgrade and uh, we've gotten some very good response. Uh, go to orats.com. Check out the blogs at blog.orats.com. Um, Twitter as well. Uh, and come see us at the advisors option once in a while, Mark. Yeah, the other fun show you do on my network, which we're going to be doing a little truncated this time. We're going to be doing it from the, uh, the the Swan event in a couple of days, and then also with you in Miami. So it'll be all sorts of fun. My audio guys will love it. We'll have a two-part kind of uh, cut-together show, which will be interesting. And Mr. Meatball, I won't be seeing you in Miami, unfortunately, but you got a lot of stuff cooking, and people, if they want to come see you in Chicago pretty soon... Uh, which is scary. June's almost upon us, which is nuts. But where should they go? What should they do, sir? Yeah, you know, um, we got a lot of things going on here at Option Pit. Um, so, yeah, uh, our June event, you get to hang out with me, you get to hang out with Mark, get to hang out with Mike Tusa, Andrew. Uh, the Thompson boys are going to be there. Uh, it's going to be just one heck of a vol event. Go to OptionPit.com. It's right on the front page to sign up. Uh, we have a big announcement involving VIX and spikes trading. 
uh, that's going to be coming up in the next couple of weeks. And um, I'm doing a free webinar uh, next Thursday. You can go to optionkid.com slash stock trading to sign up. But more importantly, come and visit me in Chicago. Can't wait to see you. Check it out. I'll be there. Maybe we'll twist Matt's arm to be there. Who knows? You never know who's going to be there. You know, a free steak from the meatball. That brings people from far and wide, hither and yon. So check it out, optionpit.com to learn more. I mentioned we got some good stuff coming for you, so stay tuned for that. A lot of great guests. If you can, if you can think of them, if they're interesting names in the world of options, chances are we're going to be talking to them in the next couple of weeks. So a lot of great chats coming at you, a lot of great programs and episodes coming at you on the network. So stay tuned for that. This is our, one of our busy seasons, so it's going to be doing a lot of talking over the next couple of weeks. So hopefully the voice holds up. I find a cigar or two at OIC really tends to keep the timber over there, which is nice. And on behalf of Matt and the Meatball entity, myself, and even my boy Luigi there listening live, I just love that handle. It brings a smile to my face. <laughs> I want to thank all of you out there for downloading, streaming, and subscribing, for listening live, all the fun stuff that you do. Keep it coming, and we'll see you back here next week for more volatility views. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com.